Okay, so now we're at 3.4 zeros of polynomial functions. So as I mentioned at the end of the last video, we're this is just a continuation of 3.3, but now you're going to be asked to solve these without being given any hints. And so that is going to lead us to this new thing called the rational zero theorem. And so zeros, once again, those are going to be the x-intercepts, right? Those are the solutions that make the equation equal zero. Now the word rational, that's a fancy word for a fraction. But also that includes whole numbers too, because if you had a fraction like 4 over 2, that's the same thing as 2, right? So we're talking about fractions, so fractions like 1 half, negative 1 third, stuff like that. Those are rational numbers. And so the rational zero theorem is going to provide a list of possible rational zeros, or solutions, for a polynomial. So it... What's going to, it's going to be kind of weird. It's not super difficult, but once again, it's one of those things that once you see it a couple of times, you're like, okay, I can come up with this list. Okay. And so to create this list, first, you want to list all the factors of the constant term and the leading coefficient. So let's go ahead and let's really break this down into smaller steps so we can uh, kind of see this process. And so I'm going to go ahead and jump down to part A, and we'll kind of finish this theorem in just a second. So part one, list all the factors of the constant term. That would be this right here, 12, and list um, n of the leading coefficient, which in this case is a 1 in front right there. That's the leading coefficient. And so what we're going to do here is the... Basically, the factors are numbers that would multiply to give you 12, like 1 and 12, negative 1 and negative 12, 2 and 6, negative 2 and negative 6, and so on. And so the way I kind of like to explain this, though, is really uh, I like to kind of work my way up because I don't want my numbers to kind of be out of order. I like to kind of start with the smallest number and work my way up. And so what I do is I just basically try to figure out numbers that can divide into 12. And so that's kind of the way I approach it. So what numbers can divide into 12? Well, 1 and negative 1. And so for shorthand, a lot of times we'll just put positive and negative 1. And then let's see, 2 could divide into 12 evenly, so positive and negative 2. So can 3. 3 could divide into 12. So can 4. So there's quite a, quite a few for this one. Um, and 6, and then also 12. And so, see, these are the combinations that would, the factors the, that would multiply to give you 12. The 1 and the 12, the 2 and the 6, and the 3 and the 4. But this is the way I like to write it. It's just more organized. Okay, so now that I have that, now I need to list all the factors of the leading coefficient. And so for this first example, it's pretty easy because it's just a 1. So it's the only uh, numbers that can multiply to give you 1 are 1 times 1 and negative 1 times negative 1. Um, so that's just going to be positive and negative 1. So that's step 1. So you just go ahead and list these combinations. And like I said, this probably sounds pretty weird, pretty bizarre. Um, but um, it's, it's a theorem that's going to work for us and help us solve these, um, these polynomial functions. So the next step is to create a list of all possible combinations of the constant factor divided by the leading coefficient factors. And so I kind of have a visual here, right here. By the way, a lot of times they'll label the factors of the constant as uh, p. So you would say this is a set of p values right here. And the denominator, a lot of times you'll see q represents the denominator there. Not super important, but like if you were to look in a book or if you watch a video or go online, a lot of times they'll use P and Q to represent those sets. So what I have to do here is list the combination of all the factors of the constant divided by the factors of the leading coefficient. So I'm going to write this down. And so and I'm going to use X equals. Now remember, this is just a set of possible solutions. So on top, the numerator is the set of P, which would be positive and negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And then my denominator is going to be the set of factors of the leading coefficient, which would be positive and negative 1. Now what you're supposed to do here is come up with the, all the different combinations you could create and this one's actually a pretty easy one. The next one will be a little bit more challenging. But what we're doing here is basically you're going to divide 
you're going to look at all the combinations of dividing all these top numbers by 1 and by negative 1. And so whenever you have your denominator as 1 or negative 1, you're just going to get a repeat of all the values on top because 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1 and so on. Same thing with 2 over 1, 2 over negative 1, 3 over 1, 3 over negative 1 and so on. And so you don't need to worry about the negatives on top. You're because you already have that taken care of. So like I have 3 over 1, 3 over negative 1. So I don't need to worry about doing negative 3 over positive 1 because that one's already been listed. Um, so your set is always going to be the positive and negative of whatever values you come up with. So this set of possible solutions is just going to be a repeat of everything I have listed here on top. So positive and negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And so um, that's where I'm going to stop right now uh, as far as like solving this problem. We're not actually asked to solve the problem right now. We're just asked to come up with a list of possible rational zeros. So this is just a list of possible, possible values that could make this function equal zero. So I have a very important note right here. So most of the numbers in this list will not work. Most of them don't work. Okay, but maybe one, two, possibly three of them do work, but most of them won't work. Okay, so most of these will not be zeros for the polynomial. But if there are, if there exist any rational zeros, they will be within the list. Okay, so if there are any um, whole numbers or fractions that will satisfy this equation to make it equal zero, it's going to be within that list. Okay, for sure. Okay, so like I said, a little weird. It's not going to be super difficult, but it is kind of a little weird. And once you do a couple of them, you'll be okay. So we're going to do one more of these where we just come up with the list. But then uh, moving forward after this example B, what we're going to do is we're going to start trying them. So you just, you can randomly try them. I typically go in numerical order, but we're going to start plugging um, or using some of these numbers for synthetic division, hoping that we hit one. So you can kind of treat it like a game. You're trying to hit one to get a remainder of zero. And so we'll look at an example of that in just a second. But before we do that, let's do one more of these. Um, so what I'm doing here is it's going to be x equals. And so the, the numerator is going to be all the factors of the constant term, which in this case is 7. So luckily, that's actually not going to be too many. That's just going to be positive and negative 1 and positive and negative 7. Those are the two numbers that can divide into 7. And they're the factors of 7, 1 times 7 and negative 1 times negative 7. Now, my, my leading coefficient actually is going to have quite a few this time. And so let's see. Um, once again, I just kind of like to go in order of whole numbers that can divide evenly into the value. So positive and negative 1 can divide into 8. Positive and negative 2 can divide into 8. Positive and negative 4 can divide into 8 evenly. And then last, positive and negative 8 can divide into 8 evenly. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit more challenging than the first one. But like I said, once you do this a couple times, it's not, it's not going to give you too much trouble. So what I have to do here is come up with all the combinations of like doing 1 divided by all these different denominators. And then 7, same thing. But the way I like to do it is I actually kind of go the opposite way. I divide everything on top by 1. So everything divided by 1 and negative 1, once again, will just give you a repeat of what you already have on top. So 1 divided by 1 and 7 divided by 1, and then also the negatives of those. So we're going to have positive and negative 1, positive and negative 7. Then, now I do the same thing, but I do it with the 2 and negative 2. So divide both of these by 2 and negative 2. So that's going to give me positive and negative 1 over 2 and positive and negative 7 over 2. Okay, and I just kind of keep going down my list. So next would be the 4. So same thing, I'm going to go ahead and 1 divided by 4, and it's going to be, you want to look at it, oops, you want to look at it as positive and negative, so positive and negative 1 over 4, and then positive and negative 7 over 4. And then the last one, Let's see, uh, right here, we'll go ahead and do divide by 8. So we're going to get positive and negative 1 over 8, 
and positive and negative 7 over 8. And so, really, I have a list of a lot of numbers here because each number you see is really two numbers. 1, negative 1, 7, negative 7, and so on. So there's really, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I'm coming up with a list of 16 possible values that will work. Like I said, most of them actually don't work. But once you hit one that you, that does work, um, it's it's fairly easy to solve the to find the others. Once you find one, finding the others is fairly simple. Okay, so don't don't worry too much about this. And uh, well, you definitely need to be able to do this. But on your homework, um, don't worry. You're not going to type it all out. It'll be like a multiple choice, and so that should kind of make life a little bit easier for you. Okay. But let's go ahead and jump in on one of these. And so problem number one should kind of look familiar. You've done problems like this before in the previous section. But what's going to be different, once again, is I don't give you a solution to start with. Once you get one, though, if you remember from the previous section, once you got one, you could find the other two fairly easily. So here are the steps. Step um, one, or step A, list the possible rational zero. So doing exactly what we just did up above. Then use synthetic division to test. You're going to test the possible rational zeros to find an actual one. So you're going to have to have a remainder of zero, and then you know you found an actual solution. Once you find that, then you're going to use the quotient from part B to find the remaining zeros of the polynomial function. So let me go ahead and walk you through this first one. So... Once again, we need to come up with our possible solution sets. We'll call this part A, right? Oops. Part A. And so X equals the numerator. The top value is all the combinations that divide into 12 evenly. So that's going to be positive and negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Those are all numbers that can divide into 12 evenly. Then we're going to take the leading coefficient, which is 1. The numbers that divide into 1 are positive and negative 1. So what's nice about my list is they're all going to be whole numbers. They're not going to be fractions because when I create my combinations, I divide these all by 1 and negative 1. I just get a repeat of everything I already have in the numerator spot. Okay, so now I have those those values and so really I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I got 12 possible values and hopefully I can get one of them to work and once I get one then the other two should be fairly simple to find. So we're just kind of, you know, you could do it randomly if you want but I like to just kind of go in order of my list because if I kind of jump around I might forget which ones I've already tried. So I'm just going to start with one. So synthetic division, I got to take my leading coefficients and list them here. And then I'm going to start with the number 1. And so we drop the first value, multiply, put it here. Add that together, that's negative 1. Multiply, put it here. That adds, that's negative 12. Multiply, put it here. Oh, I got pretty lucky, okay? A lot of times uh, you're not going to get it on the first try, okay? But I just so happen to get it on the first one. So my quotient... I have to reduce the power by 1, right? So this be, would become x squared. This would become minus x. This would be minus 12. So that's my quotient right there. Now, I used uh, 1 as my, as my value. So that written as a factor, by the way, would be x minus 1, right? Because you set it equal to 0 and solve. So I, I'm going to include this just to make sure uh, we're understanding this. This is what my function is right here. This is what f of x is. I basically just factored this. This that I have written up here, the x cubed minus 2x squared minus 11x plus 12, that's what this is right here. But I basically, I've, I've factored it, and I figured out one of my solutions is 1. So I want to make sure that's going to be part of my answer that I'm going to have to put down. Now, the other two, once again, these should be kind of easy to find because uh, this... Most of the time, they're going to be factorable. If they're not, we'll have to do the quadratic formula, and we'll review that when we get there. And so, but I should be able to factor this. So I'm trying to figure out what multiplies to give me negative 12, but will add to give me negative 1 so that I can factor that. So think about that. See if you can come up with those numbers. 
And so let's see, what, let's see. So I'm gonna have x and x here. X times x is the x squared. Multiply to give me negative 12, but we'll add to give me negative one. It should be a minus four and a plus three. Those two numbers multiply to give me the negative 12. And then the outer and the inner, that's what adds up to that negative one x in the middle. And so now I've factored it completely. And so now I'm ready to list my solution. So the order you list them doesn't really matter. So let's see, four, negative three, and positive one. So it doesn't really matter what order I put them in. What you will notice is all those numbers were within my list, my list that I came up with up here. So all those numbers were in my list. Um, so any one of those, if you were to plug it into that original function, up here, it will cause this to equal zero. The function will come back zero. So if I plug in f of four, it's gonna come back to zero, f of negative three, so on. Any of those you plug in, it's gonna be zero. Okay, let's do one more, and then I'm gonna make a part two video. So let's look at this one. This one's actually very similar, but it has something a little interesting to it. But um, all right, so the first part, or, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and point this out now because um, what I want you to notice is we're missing an x squared. So you want to rewrite this as f of x equals x cubed. And then you need to put a plus 0x squared minus 7x plus 6. So I want to do that now. Okay, so now let's come up with our list. So that's part A. So you need to come up with your list. And the numerator is going to be a list of all the factors that can multiply to give us 6, right? So I like to use division though. So what numbers divide evenly into six? Well, positive and negative one, two, three, and six. Those are all numbers that can divide into six evenly. Now, luckily my front value again is a positive one. So that's gonna make life a little bit easier. So that's gonna be positive and negative one for my denominator. And then now you have to look at all the combinations of dividing these by one and negative one. So that's nice because it's just going to give us a repeat of the numerator right here. So positive and negative one, positive and negative two, positive and negative three, positive and negative six. So I came up with four possible, I'm sorry, eight, eight possible numbers that could make this function equal zero. And so now it's time to do the synthetic division, but it's very important that I put that zero x squared there so that when I start that process, I need to have a one, a zero, a negative seven, and a six. Okay, if you don't put the zero there, it's not gonna work out for you. So let's go ahead and start with one again. Let's see if I get lucky. So let's see, I drop the one, one times one is one. One plus zero is one. One times one is one. One plus negative, uh, seven is negative six and oh boy it looks like I got lucky again okay don't assume that's gonna happen all the time okay um, all right so now what we want to do here is let's see my quotient would be x squared plus x and then minus six so that's my quotient so here's one of my solutions right here and so what we want to do now is basically factor this and get two more solutions, okay? And so that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take x squared plus x minus six. We're gonna set that equal to zero and try to figure out my other two solutions. So once again, the factoring should not be too difficult. We're gonna try to figure out what multiplies to give us negative six, but then would add to give me that one in the middle right there. So that should be an x plus 3 and an x minus 2, right? So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and then that adds up to that 1 in the middle. So I got my other two solutions, negative 3 and positive 2. And once again, you'll notice that those were both within my list of possibilities. Okay, so then on your homework, your final answer is the list of all these solutions. And once again, it doesn't really matter the order you put them in. So let's see, one was the first one because I got a remainder of zero. So that showed me that it was a solution. Then I took the quotient, factored it to find the other two, which is going to be negative three and positive two. And there is my set of solutions.
Okay, so I've got, I think, three more examples, but I'm going to go ahead and stop this for part one, and we'll pick up um, in part two in just a moment.